Shalom, welcome to the Jewish Task Force, JTF. I'm Chaim Ben Pesach, and we have another program with the great David Ben Moshe. On this program, we're going to discuss the debate. This is the day after the debate that we're recording this program. Donald Trump won the debate, but the news media, the left-wing biased news media, is convincing most Americans that Kamala Harris won. We're going to explain to you what the implications of that are and why <clears throat> that means that the odds are in her favor now in this election because the media is lying and brainwashing and most Americans, unfortunately, are stupid enough to listen to the media. We're going to discuss all that and what we can try to do to try to prevent that from happening, to try to get a Trump victory. And why this is so dangerous, uh, especially for Israel. We saw that again in the debate. But before we get to that, this program is dedicated to a refuah shlema, a complete recovery for Sharon Mitman, Shlomo ben Sara, Dorit bat Sara, Ruven ben Shoshana, and, and Ruth Batsara, and to Ilui Neshamot, Elevating of the Souls, for Malka Bat Meir, Allegra Bat Shlomo, Daniel Nankin, Victor Chazdai, Pesach Seb Ben Dov, Lunita Adler, Shifra Hoffman, Ruven Hoffman, Barry Hoffman, Harab Mir Kahana, Rab Benjamin Kahana, Tsipora Fegi Bat Liba, Yosef Ben Meir, Robert Mitman, Dennis Shore, Helen Friedman, Charles Olat, and Yair Levine. Well, we saw, of course, the debate last night i assume that most of our viewers have seen the debate trump won on most of the points in the debate on most of the points he won but the news media is attempting to convince and i think they're successfully convincing most stupid people that kamala harris won but before i explain to you why that potentially could be very bad news i want to make clear because i don't want people to feel total despair after hearing bad news, because sometimes we do bring you bad news. We tell you reality on this program. But in the end, we want you to know that the good guys are going to win. I want to make that very clear. The same God of Israel who promised the Jewish people that they would return to the land of Israel after a long exile, after the Romans threw them out of Israel, murdered one million Jews. There was a Holocaust. The Romans initiated a Holocaust against the Jews, and there was one. there were one million murder Jews. That was the majority of the Jewish population in the world in those days, murdered. And the Jews were scattered to the four winds and it was the end of their homeland. And it looked completely hopeless. Who would have believed that 2,000 years after that event, God would bring the Jews back to that same land, speaking the same language, believing in the same religious faith and the same Bible, and winning victories against enemies that outnumber them that outnumber the Jews 100 to 1 in 6 day wars and making the desert bloom like a garden and all the other fulfillment of biblical prophecy the same god that has done all of that is going to fulfill all of his promises to bring us geulah shlema a complete redemption so in the end we're going to win the good guys are going to win i hope everybody in our audience is going to be part of that victory because if you're on the wrong side there and you don't do the right things, then you won't be part of it. But in the end, the good guys are going to win. The God of Israel is stronger than Kamala Harris and all the liars and frauds in the establishment. And so even if all the nations of the world are against Israel, in the end, Israel will survive. But we don't want a lot of suffering until then and a lot of a lot of death and, and destruction until then, which is what will happen if we don't do the right thing, if we don't do what's right. So I just wanted to bring that up to make it very clear so that people shouldn't despair if they hear bad news on this program because we have some bad news here. And the bad, I think, from what I'm seeing, I hope it doesn't turn out that way. I hope it doesn't pan out that way. But I think, from what I'm seeing, that people are stupid enough to think that Kamala Harris won the debate. She didn't win the debate. Donald Trump won the debate. Kamala Harris never told the truth in the debate. I don't think she looked like a leader in the debate or a president in the debate, and I'm ast astonished that there are people saying, oh, she looked very presidential. I mean, I'm just astonished when I see things like that. Now, I do have to say that Trump could have that if we had had Ron DeSantis as the Republican candidate, it would have been much better. Remember when Ron DeSantis debated against Gavin Newsom? 
They had a debate in front of Sean Hannity. Gavin Newsom versus Ron DeSantis. Gavin Newsom challenged him to the debate. And DeSantis immediately accepted. And DeSantis, everybody agrees that DeSantis slaughtered Newsom. Slaughtered him. There wasn't even a question on every issue and every round. Slaughtered him. Wouldn't it have been better if Ron DeSantis was going against Kamala Harris in the debate? A disciplined candidate with a great record as governor of Florida who could have compared his record as governor of Florida to her record as DA in San Francisco when she destroyed San Francisco or her record as attorney general of California when she destroyed California. Ron DeSantis would have done that. We urged people to vote for Ron DeSantis, but Republicans are so stupid and the American people have become so stupid, so dumbed down that it's it's unbelievable unbelievable trump unfortunately started talking about people eating dogs and cats and pets and started talking about crowd size she goaded him on and every time she she brought up a subject that would that would irritate him he right away jumped jumped in and fell into the trap and started talking about his great crowd sizes and ridiculous issues that 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 made him look small and petty when he had a real story to tell, things were better when he was president. That's the story, the only story he should have told. When he was president, the economy was much better than it is under Kamala Harris and the late Joe Biden. When he was president, inflation was 1%, whereas it is, it, it's gone up sometimes 10 or 20 times as much during most of the administration of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and the late Joe Biden. When he was president, interest rates were one third of what they are right now. Small businesses can't expand and can't take out loans. People can't buy homes. People can't even buy new cars. They can't get loans because interest rates are so sky high. You have inf massive inflation, very high interest rates, a very bad economy in every respect, and the border. The, the, the catastrophe at the border that is destroying this country. Kamala Harris wants those illegal aliens to come across the border. She was put in charge of the border, and her real job was to let was to try to bring in as many as possible without the American people getting too, out, too outraged. That's their goal, because they know that those illegal aliens, if they become citizens, will vote Democrat. That's what they want. They couldn't care less about the future of the United States. They don't even love the United States. They're not even loyal to the United States. They're not patriotic Americans. They're traitors. And they will bring illegals and other enemies of this country into the United States because they know they're going to vote Democrat. That's all they care about. She doesn't care. Kamala Harris, that, that hooker who slept with men who were 30 and 40 years older than her so that she could get ahead. That's how she got ahead. She's incompetent. She doesn't know what she's, she, she offers nothing in terms of talent or ability as a leader, nothing. She only got ahead by sleeping with Willie Brown and with other men. Willie Brown was the mayor of San Francisco and she slept with these people and, and offered her body to these people who were 30 and 40 years older than her, married men, by the way, like a hooker to get ahead. That, if that's not prostitution, I don't know what is. The street hookers. The street hookers in every ghetto and slum have more integrity than she does. And and she, and she is and and instead and Donald Trump should have focused only on look at my you know what he should have said? I'll tell you what he should have said. I'm Donald Trump now in the debate. As soon as Kamala Harris finished talking about how wonderful the economy is under under her and Joe Bi the late Joe Biden, you know what he should have said? Sir? If you believe that, if you believe what she just said now, then vote for her. If you believe, if you really believe that inflation was better, has been better under her administration than under my administration, then vote for her. If you really believe that interest rates were lower for, on your credit cards and interest rates when you want to buy a home or a car or, or expand a small business, if you believe interest rates were better under, uh, are better under her administration than under my administration, then vote for her. By all means, vote for her. If you believe the border was better and has been better since she was given, since she was put in charge of the border, 
And 20 million illegal aliens came, came stampeding across the border as a result of that. If you believe that's better than what it was under my administration, then vote for her. But if you believe that I did a better job in those areas, then you have to vote for me. That's what he should have said. Because most Americans went into that debate believing that Trump was better in all of those areas, including many of her own voters. That's what he should have said. Now, he did say at the end, but again, it was, it just wasn't as effective as it should have been. He said, in the end, he, and he shouldn't have used it as, in his closing statement. He should have said it during the debate. His closing statement should have been a statement about what he plans to do. But anyway, he did say, he, and he did, he did say during the debate, you know, you're talking about the border? You can close the border right now. Just sign an executive order closing the border. I'm going to do that, he should have said. I'm going to do that. The minute I become president, I'm going to sign an executive order. We're going to close the border. Why doesn't she do that? Why doesn't she do that right now? Why didn't she do that for the past four years? Because they want, and he should have said, because they want illegal aliens to come crashing across the border and stampeding across the border because they know that those illegal aliens, when they become citizens, will eventually vote Democrat. And that's what he should have said. Instead, there was talk about eating dogs and cats and pets and about crowd size and about how much he inherited from his father you know things that he you know what he he, he should have said this is what he should have said i know he should have been he should have shown some humility for a change if he had shown some humility he would have won the debate easily he should have because you're supposed to be even leaders everybody is supposed to be humble one thing judaism taught the world judaism introduced into the world for the first time even the king is not above the law. Everyone is a human being and everyone is subject to the laws of God and every human being should be humble. He should have been a little humble and he should have said, I know that sometimes you get upset by things that I tweet and things that I say and things that are politically incorrect. I know that. But don't vote on the basis of being upset about a tweet that I, that I, that I, let, that I tweeted or something that I said, don't be upset about that. Don't vote on the basis of that. Vote on the basis of what's better for your family, your community, your city, your country. Vote for who's going to do a better job on keeping the prices down at your grocery store when you put gas in, 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 in your gas tank on, in your car. Vote for who's going to keep prices lower and who's going to enable you to live a better life for you and your children and your community. And your neighbors and 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 your and your state and your country. That's what you should be voting on the basis of. Not voting on the basis of you're upset with me because I I made this statement or that statement. I say things that are politically incorrect or I tweeted something. I admit that sometimes, you know, sometimes, okay, sometimes I tweet things that that make that upset people and I say things that are politically incorrect and unpopular sometimes. I admit that. But that's not what this election's about. This election is about who is going to give America a fighting chance to survive and flourish in the future. That's what this election is about. That's how he should have presented himself in the debate and not veer from that, not allow the media to divert attention from that. That's what should have happened. Ron DeSantis would have done that. And Ted now, Haim, it's easy. It's easy for you to say you're a great debater. Donald Trump is not a great debater. He has always had a dour personality, and that always comes through. And a lot of people don't even care about his policies. They care about, does he look presidential? Does he smile? He never smiles. And that dour personality, they, they look at that rather than what's going to affect them, their neighborhoods, and their country. And this country has turned into especially the big cities one big garbage dump well that but but this is what i'm this is exactly what i'm saying he could have used the fact that he has a personality that turns people off he could have used that to his advantage and he could have said i know that sometimes some people don't like me okay don't like me but do what's best for your family for your neighborhood for your community for your country that's what he should have said because i because americans do know that things were better at the grocery store when he was president, that things were better at the gas pump when he was president, that things were better on interest rates that they're paying on their credit cards. 50% of Americans 
are stupidly paying interest rate. You shouldn't have to pay any interest rate on your credit card. You should pay up. You should not charge anything if it's a if if you can't afford it. You should never, never be in a situation where at the end of the month you don't pay your full credit card bill. You should pay your full credit card bill and never, never give give twenty two percent of these crazy interest rates that these crooks at these credit card companies charge. Never allow that to happen. But still, fifty percent of Americans who have credit cards do not pay their 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 whole bill at the end of the month only pay part of it and so they have these massive interest rates that are hovering over them 50 percent of americans are in debt one way or another they have debts right now at least 50 percent 61 percent of americans would have a hard time putting together a thousand dollars for an emergency if they needed it right now i mean the economic situation now is terrible and yes, it was better when Donald Trump was president. It was improving when Donald Trump was president. And under Kamala Harris and the late Joe Biden, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And he should have made that case to the American people because the average American with a credit card can relate to that. The average American, the average American has a car that Americans do have. Even poor Americans have cars. And they know what it's like at the gas pump. And they know that it was better under him. And the average American knows what it's like when they go to the grocery store or when they purchase anything. Well, I mean, if they have to purchase clothes or furniture or anything they have to purchase, and certain essentials sometimes in life that you want to purchase. The average American knows that things are much higher and, and, and that inflation is, is, is a very serious problem. And Trump also made another mistake. He should have attacked those ABC moderators. First of all, he should never have agreed to a debate on ABC. Never. Never. He should have said, I want a neutral debate. I want Lincoln Douglas debate. Lincoln Douglas, there was no moderator. You and I, you and I, Kamala, let's just debate each other. That's what he should have proposed. If I were Donald Trump, I would go to Kamala Harris's rallies. I'd stand outside her rally and say, I challenge you to a debate right now. I would go to her rallies. I would follow her all around the country. I I would do it in J.D. Vance. We'd follow her around the country and we'd say, we want to we debate you right now. But Lincoln, Lincoln Douglas, without the news media protecting you, and because and, the debate was three against one. Now, once he was already in the debate and had already agreed to the debate, which was a mistake, in my opinion. The Republicans always say, next time we're going to have a neutral moderator. They never say we're going to have a Republican moderator. They'll go for a neutral moderator, but they give up on it and they jump with the left-wing moderator every time. Once again, I have to say, and I always say it, the Republicans will always find some way to let you down. He should never have agreed to the debate. I agree with you, and he should never have agreed to the debate on ABC because the debate, first of all, he should, but, but once he was in that debate, the minute they started calling him and, and, and so-called fact-checking him, the so-called fact-checking, they're liars, by the way, those, those two filthy, stinking communist, re Jew-hating reporters, Yimach Shmam Vazichram, Shem Rishayim Yirkav, those filthy, stinking Jew-haters, uh, uh, David Muir, and uh, who, you know, who, when he's not debating, he's going to gay bars with his boyfriend. By the way, he is gay. And he goes to gay bars with his boyfriend. Okay, uh, one of the I forgot which reporter, but he was he was going with one of the reporters there. But now that reporter married another man, so now he can't go with him because he'll commit adultery. You know, I mean, this is this is this is the this is the reporter there. I, and I'm not saying Donald Trump should have brought that up in the debate because stupid Americans probably would think, oh, that you don't say that. That's not nice. I would say it, but anyway, but you know, I'm saying that's not nice. And and then and then uh, Lindsey Davis completely incompetent. I'm not even going to go into it. You know why I think she's incompetent, but I'm I'm not even I'm not even going to go into it because I'm a moderate and I'm a civil rights leader. But anyway, um, those two hideous propagandists for the Bolshevik propagandists for the left. He should have said right away. He said, "Hey, wait a minute. Are you part of? Are you are you working with her in this debate? Aren't you supposed to be impartial?" What's going on here? You're fact-checking supposedly in the debate? I don't agree with your facts. Who are you to decide what is factual and what is truth and what is not truth? Who are you? Who, who made you God? How dare you? 
interfere in this debate. I would have said that in the middle. Every time they start, they did that, I would have called them on it, and I would have said, look at this. This is three against one. This is completely unfair. Because if Americans think you're being treated unfairly, that could be in your favor. Americans don't. The average person doesn't like when someone is being is being ganged up on and treated unfairly. And he was ganged up on and treated unfairly, but he didn't even he didn't get into that in the debate. And he he mentioned after the debate was over, he's he's talking about it now, you know, which he should. But anyway, look, we have to support Donald Trump, and we have to defeat Kamala Harris. Even though I'm annoyed with the fact that Trump is the nominee because Ted Cruz and Ron DeSantis would have been much better. Ted Cruz in 2016, Ron DeSantis this year. And uh, I'm so annoyed at the stupid Republicans. But despite that, despite that, we don't have a choice here. And let me tell you Jews something, okay? In that debate, first of all, Donald Trump said that she hates Israel, which is true. But then he had to say, and she's also hates the Arabs. In other words, he was also trying to make a pitch for the Arab vote. That's Donald Trump. Okay, that's one of the problems with Donald Trump. He can't be trusted uh, on these issues. But he's not Kamala Harris. Did you see what Kamala Harris did in that debate? She was Palestinian state, two-state solution. That was 90% of what she was talking about was the, um, the how you saw how intensely she's committed to creating a Palestinian terrorist state which we know what that means. That means Israel's in borders that are six to nine miles wide. That's suicide for Israel. What happened on October 7th can happen a thousand times worse, God forbid. There'll be, there could be a Holocaust if Israel creates a Palestinian state, and she will do everything she can. If she's president of the United States, God forbid, she will organize the whole world to gang up on little Israel. And to and to make and to pressure little Israel, you can't make little Israel. If they had real leaders, they would re they would refuse. But to pressure little Israel to do this insane thing, the suicidal insane thing, and with Israel's weak leaders, there is a very real danger that Israel will do that, and that Israel will be in terrible peril because of that, and that it will lead to ter massive death and destruction. That can happen, God forbid. With Kamala Harris as president, that can happen. No one has a bigger stake in this election than Jews. No one has a reason, a more important reason to vote for Donald Trump than Jews. A lot is at stake. The Democrat Party is definitely anti-Semitic. There's nothing but Jew hatred from the Democrats and their supporters. So you have to be one sick pup if you're Jewish and you vote for Kamala Harris. Her husband is a Jew who has said we got to separate Jews from Israel. Don't blame us for what Israel does. We don't agree with what Israel does. That mentality in the White House, you know what that means. It means that the means you're, 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 basically, you're, you're basically burying Israel. He wants to bury Israel. He's embarrassed about Israel because he's progressive. He's a Hollywood attorney. He represents the stars in Hollywood, like that other hooker, Taylor Swift. He represents the stars in Hollywood. I have a Jewish table tennis player who comes from Hollywood limousine liberals. And his, his mother was actually the guest star in the final episode of the original Star Trek. And they had Maxine Waters and Nancy Pelosi over to their house many times. He couldn't take it anymore. So he left and came to Arizona because he's not one of them. And uh, I got to take my hat off and salute him being brought up in a Jewish household that was ultra, ultra liberal, bordering on communist. And he escaped it on his own to come here. Another thing that should have been brought up in the debate, he should have said, because Kamala Harris was talking about her record as attorney general and district attorney, he should have said, oh, you heard that? She was district attorney in San Francisco. She was attorney general of California. If you like what she did to San Francisco, if you think San Francisco was in good shape after she was DA, then vote for her. If you think 
California has been in good shape after she was attorney general and U.S. senator, then vote for her. If you like what she did to San Francisco and California and you want her to do that to the whole country, then vote for her. That's what he also should have said that in the debate. He should have said, do you want miles and miles of tent cities of homeless people who are mentally unbalanced or criminals, murderers, rapists, criminals, drug dealers? You want that all over the country? You want her to spread that all over the country? Millions of people are leaving California. Millions are leaving California for Republican states like Texas and Florida. How come... How come they're all running away from California to Texas and Florida after Kamala Harris was DA in San Francisco? You want her to do to the country what she did to San Francisco, where half of the stores in San Francisco are boarded up and out of business because they're fleeing? The downtown San Francisco, some of the priciest, most choice real estate in the world in downtown San Francisco and in downtown Los Angeles, it's now like a ghost town after Kamala Harris was DA in San Francisco and Attorney General of California. You want that for the country? Then vote for her. Because if I'm president, I would have said, we're not going to have those policies. We're going to have the opposite policies. We're going to get the criminals who have crossed our border and who are committing crimes and, enda and endangering and terrorizing the American people. We're getting them out of this country because we're going to protect the American people. And when they asked him about him making a statement that Kamala Harris, is she really black? Is she, you know, what a stupid issue to bring up. Is she really black? Is she not? A, he, you know what he should have said? He should have said this. <clears throat> What's important to black, Latino, Asian, and white people is that they'll be safe in their own neighborhoods again. Not like what Kamala Harris did in San Francisco as DA. She, and, and then he should have brought up, as we did on this show, he should have brought out the names of the people who were murdered by the people that Kamala Harris let out of prison as DA in San Francisco. He should have brought up their names and said, do you want this as our national policy? You want a president that does this? That's the real Kamala Harris. The Kamala Harris that lets murderers out of prison. The Kamala Harris who, as DA, because of our allowing murderers out of prison, innocent people were murdered, were brutally shot to death because of her. You want that as president? If you want that, vote for her. You want a Kamala Harris who thinks that it's racist to put murderers and rapists in prison? Then vote for her. Anyway, what can I say? Um, you know, he tried, look, he still brought up, he told the truth. Trump was telling, they, they keep saying Trump lies and lies. <laughs> he told the truth. She is against fracking. She is, I mean, <laughs> Trump should have brought up the fact that when he left office, America was not only energy independent, he made America a net exporter of oil. America had become a net exporter of oil for the first time in modern history. And the Muslim countries and Iran and Saudi Arabia were really hurting. He did bring up that, that Iran was hurting, that Iran was broke, which was true when he was president. But he, he brought up all of these things and he said he should have brought up that America became an ex, a net exporter. And if, he had, and if he's given another four years, he's going to make America the premier energy giant in the world. And that means energy prices will be much lower. And that means America will generate trillions, not billions, but trillions of dollars in 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 energy revenue from all over the world people will buy american oil and american and 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 american energy products and other american it's energy not just gas it's also home heating oil so getting those prices back down to where they were when he was president is like giving the population a tax cut right and i mean <clears throat> on point after point then she said He's going to, it's a big, that his tariffs are going to be like a tax increase, like a 20% tax on American consumers. He did bring up, there he, there he was good. There he brought up the fact <clears throat> that I already put a 10% tariff in my first term. And people like you who support China and who support enemies of the United States and who support these, the, are giving, giving away everything for nothing, 
you said that this you said you made the same argument then but that didn't happen i had one percent inflation how is it how is it that that didn't happen during the first four years of my administration my tariffs worked and the proof of my the, the proof of the fact is that you kept most the tariffs that i that i imposed on 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 china for instance you kept those tariffs you haven't you never removed them so you also know that those tariffs have worked and that that's and that those tariffs did not generate inflation on the contrary they were good for america so that he brought up i think he could have brought it up even more effectively but anyway he brought it up look whatever my criticism is again we have so much at stake here if she gets elected, she'll be president, God forbid, for eight years. Be you know, I mean, we we what happens to America at this point? America is now fifty eight percent white Anglo, forty two percent non white Anglo. That's the demographics, okay. And by the way, Latinos and other groups, and Asians and others, uh, some of them are voting Republican. So that's very good. We want to encourage that. But America is about to become demographically what California has become. America is moving into that territory. And that means America will become politically what California is, where you can never elect a Republican. Only the left wins over and over again, overwhelmingly in every election. They have a two, two houses of the state legislature in California are more than two-thirds Democrat. Democrat governors, controllers, attorney generals, um, state treasurers, all the positions, secretary of state, all the positions in California, all controlled by left-wing Democrats for decades. Both U.S. senators, of course, are Democrats. Almost all the members of the House in California are Democrats. Uh, and, and again, state legislature, more than two-thirds Democrat. And so you have a state that is massively in debt that is collapsing all over, that's just collapsing on every front, a state that was once the most prosperous, magnificent because of its weather and all the other things, all the other great attractions in the state. It was once tremendously prosperous when Ronald Reagan was governor and during other periods in California's history, and they destroyed that state. If they destroyed California, what do you think they're going to do to states that are much less wealthy than California was and much less prosperous? It'd be much easier to destroy those states. What's going to happen to places like Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania is nowhere as prosperous as California was. Pennsylvania, they'll 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 bury Pennsylvania and these other uh, swing states. I mean, it's just and <laughs> New Yorkers, New Yorkers keep voting for this, keep voting, and Californians, they're still going to vote down. They're going to vote for Kamala Harris. They're going to vote for Kamala Harris after everything she's done. I mean, you know, this is. This is a mental asylum. This is a complete mental asylum. The inmates are running the asylum. It's just insanity. Now, this means that we're in a very dangerous point here. We have to support the Hilltop youth now more than ever. We really got to back them because they're the only hope we have of stopping a Palestinian terrorist state. You take them out of the picture, the Arabs can take over all of Judea and Samaria easily because they're the only ones that are there blocking Arab territorial continuity in, in, in Section C and all of them. What they're doing on their strategic hilltops, that's the only hope we have, which is why Kamala Harris and, and, and the late Joe Biden are slapping sanctions on them and not, not on anyone else. They are the only hope we have for stopping a Palestinian terrorist state. The White House and the State Department under this under this evil administration say that they're the obstacle to a two-state solution. And they're right. They are the obstacle. We've got to support them. If you care about Israel, and if you love Israel, and if you understand that you were put in this world to do to make a difference, now's the time for you to do something, to do something good. Now's the time for you to help us and to and 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 to send your support to the heroic hilltop youth. Here's how you do it. If you want to do it online, you go to hayamin.org. Hayamin.org is our Hebrew main page. And the page is in Hebrew, but 
on top, there's a donate button in English. You just look on top for the donate button in English on, on Hayamin.org, click on the donate button, and in several minutes, you can very easily and conveniently donate. That's online. If you want to donate through the regular mail, if you don't want to donate online, you just send checks and money orders made out to JTF. And you send it to JTF PO Box 650327, Fresh Meadows, New York, 11365. This is the time, this is the, t this is the moment of truth when we're going to decide, are you going to do something positive in this world to make a positive change for good? And are you going to do everything you should be doing, everything you should be doing to make a positive change? Because you got to do you you you've got to you you've got to be actively doing everything possible to prevent this danger from coming into effect we've got to act now and if you understand that you'll take the necessary action you'll help the hilltop youth you'll help us make a difference so that even if god forbid kamala harris wins at least we'll have resistance there to to give us a fighting chance to stop a catastrophe for israel at least that'll give us a fighting chance. David? Well, you mentioned uh, about cats before. I have a funny picture because one of these immigrants, a Haitian, killed someone's cat and ate it. And so uh, Ashadina found this picture online of Donald Trump saving two cats and there's two Haitians chasing him with the uh, yum boy that makes me hungry so uh this was a picture from the internet mm -hmm. the thing is probably 15 million by the time kamala harris and joe biden leave office january 20th there'll be 15 million illegals just under their four years maybe more What's going to happen to them? Who's going to kick them out? How do you find them? Because they just melted into the country. This is a big country you can hide in. It's not like this is England, which is a, a really tiny country. How do you kick them out? I mean, the, fir the first thing I would do is cut off all benefits, not even hospitalization. You get sick, that's your hard luck. You're not supposed to be here. No schools, no money for you. And if you're caught committing a crime, we're going to send you back from an airplane from 30,000 feet. By the way, what about places like California, which have a list of the illegals because they're giving them driver's licenses? Some places have lists. We, we should see those lists should be seized. If Trump becomes president, he should seize those lists. And you and everybody in that list out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Uh, so if Trump gets in, we know he's going to what he's going to do with oil. I hope it's even more than he did his first round when gasoline was two dollars for minor brands and two oh nine for the majors here in my town. And now we're paying three thirty five for the minor brands and three fifty five for the majors. So uh, if you're happy with that, then vote for Harris. If you're happy with eggs on sale, four dollars a dozen instead of a dollar or less, then vote for Harris. The thing is, he can bring the price of oil down by opening up lands for drilling, by increasing production, allowing refineries to prosper and grow more refineries. So if one goes down, it doesn't affect too much. Right now, our refineries are running at full capacity because we have we don't have nearly enough. And so if one goes down, right away the price of oil shoots sky high. So Trump can fix all that. But the thing is, what about the prices that have already gone up that are not energy related? That's your new baseline. Those prices are going to stay like that. They are most likely not going to come down, even though the price of oil to deliver those products and the price of oil to, in some cases, make those products would be so much less. That's your new baseline figure. If America and, becomes if America becomes the energy giant of the world, energy prices will come down, and that will affect that'll affect everything. 
That will have a positive. That will have a positive. That will have a positive profit numbers. They can't produce less profit because their shareholders will get angry. It's like when uh, Obama said, "One percent GDP growth is the new norm," and of course Trump proved them wrong with better than three percent GDP growth. But uh, I've never seen prices come down. They don't even want prices to come down because they call that deflation. And people will stop buying, waiting for the price to drop even more, causing the price to drop even more. If the price drops even more, they'll wait even longer. It becomes a vicious cycle. And uh, as a yeah, consumer, but, of course, I want the price to drop. Yeah, but And also, like Haim, as Haim if, said, if, pay your credit card off at the end of the month. I do that. And I make money because you have cards that give you 1% back, one and a half. Some cards will even give you 2% back. So because I pay the credit card off at the end of the month, I have no interest payments. And I get, over the year, I get about 775 back from the credit card company. By, by the way, the um, um, even if prices remain stable, like under Trump, under Trump there was inflation of about 1%. So even if you if we return to those to that situation, but wages go up faster than that, and the stock market goes up, and bonds go up, and everything else that people are invested in go up, the wealth of the average American will rise, because you'll have people making more making money at a faster rate than the rate of inflation. That's what happened under Trump. Americans' wealth was going up. Also, the value of your if you own a home. The value of your home will rise. Whatever you own will will rise in value, and so, and so people will gain economically if if that happens. But again, that's assuming that it's also assuming that Trump does everything he's supposed to do. As pre again, I would have trusted Ron DeSantis much more because I saw as governor of Florida, he did everything he promised he was going to do and more. And so, you know, I would have wanted him as president because if America really went all out on the energy front, that would have a tremendous economic impact. Tremendous. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's good. We have a discussion. New York Times. These were some articles during the Biden administration when they knew uh, real Americans were angry and they saw our country falling apart. The New York Times, actually, this is a headline from one of their articles, not a headline on page one, but inside, probably for the uh, editorials, elections are bad for democracy. The Constitution, there's another one, the Constitution is sacred. Is it also dangerous? And the First Amendment is out of control because they want to clip your right-wing free speech. And... Uh, Private institutions, private social media are doing that. But uh, they want to make it in the government. And Ketanji Jackson, our new Supreme Court justice under Biden, complaining about the First Amendment constricting the government. This is a Supreme Court judge who's supposed to go by the Constitution and what the Constitution says and not twist what the Constitution says. Because the Constitution says what it says and doesn't say what it doesn't say. And you're not supposed to add or subtract like the Bible. You don't add or subtract from what's written. You're supposed to follow it as a Supreme Court justice. She's supposed to know that. By the way, if you took her IQ and added it to Kamala Harris's IQ, they would still be, the, added together, they're still in the single digits. The, the, the IQ of that Jackson, that so-called Supreme Court justice, you took the, her IQ together with Kamala Harris, they still, together, they have an IQ of about eight or nine. And then you have a lot of union support still in this day supporting Democrats. Now, of course, with Democrats in your pay increases may be a little larger. Maybe, maybe not, because the Democrats really don't give a damn about Americans, no matter who you are. They're only concerned with enriching themselves. You pay, you, you lose, you'll only lose money with the Democrats. You're not going to gain anything, because even if you get, let's say you get a pay increase of 3%, 
If inflation is 6%, you're losing. Under the Democrats, it's a losing proposition. And the unions, the unions do not serve their, their, their workers well at all. At all. And Haim's giving you the real inflation figure, about 8%, even though the government will tell you it's 3 or 2.9 or 3.1, and that your cost of living, if you get a cost of living increase like Social Security, pensions, anything, cost of living, it's based on what they call core inflation, which takes out food, which you must have, which goes up at a much higher rate. And fuel, which once again is not just gasoline, that's your home heating oil. Unless you want to freeze in the winter, you have to pay those increases. And it comes out so inflation is really about eight or nine percent. And uh, every Wednesday, we get the flyers from the supermarket here. And I was looking at the price of steak. It's not a steak I eat, but I, I watch the prices on everything. And this is. The big price. It's this is has the whole top corner of the uh, of the flyer, and it it's called a New York shell steak or a New York strip steak. I think in New York it's called a shell steak. Around the rest of the country, it's called a New York strip steak. It's one side of the of the uh, porterhouse, and it's sold by itself, and it's now on sale. Seven ninety nine a pound. When I moved here, it was three forty nine a pound. Quickly went going up to three ninety nine a pound. Eventually four ninety nine a pound, and it stayed at four ninety nine through Trump's whole four years as president. And then it went up to five ninety nine, six ninety nine, and for Labor Day and today, once again seven ninety nine a pound. And that hurts. So I know a lot of people cannot afford that anymore. So they're eating chopped meat or they're eating pork products if you're not Jewish. And even today, Jews are so secular, they're eating pork products. And you have to go for the cheapest. Even fish is not cheap anymore. Fish is right up there with beef. I have uh, a solution. Have the, I uh, have a solution. Eat, I have a solution. Eat more fruits and vegetables. That's first of all. That's one plus. That's one solution. And there are certain types. I agree with you. Fish, uh, fish which is healthy, salmon, and uh, and other types of fish. There there are certain types of fish that are healthy. Certain types, uh, like salmon. But uh, the price of salmon has gone through the roof under this administration. There's no question about it. Very bad. When I was a little boy, before Hyam was born, because I'm quite a bit older, you could buy a candle off for 15 cents. Today, Wait, that's... You're quite a bit older. You're almost, you're almost the same age. What do you mean you're quite a bit <laughs> We're almost I'm less than four years away from 80. I'm 68 years old. So I'm eight years older than you. Okay. So does that mean you were eight years old when I was born? Is that... Okay, is that a yeah, tremendous? Because I just had my seventy sixth birthday on August seventeenth. Me okay. and Davy Crockett. Well, okay, that's that's uh, well, happy birthday, but uh, that's um, I don't think that's much older. But anyway, okay, whatever, whatever. Yeah, a stamp was three cents, and a cantaloupe was fifteen cents. You all know how much a stamp is today, and a cantaloupe. Here, I don't know what it is. In the summertime, it was three dollars a cantaloupe. Now that we're coming to the beginning of it being out of season, it's three fifty a cantaloupe. Or maybe it just went up because of all the inflation on food. But I was even when we first moved here, you could see when the store bought too many, they wanted to get rid of them. They were selling cantaloupes for fifty cents a piece. Now, when they want to get rid of them, they're, they're 297, 277, never lower than that. Here, they're more. Kid, here, here, was here by the way, pound. you know that in, in New York, they're more expensive. You know that. Sure. And I love a melon called a Crenshaw. That's a cross between a Persian and a cassava. And it was the best tasting melon I ever had. They don't even carry it out here. In New York, it was about $3 for a melon, and they were huge. 
I remember once I, I bought one that was so huge, I had to lay it on its side. It wouldn't fit in my refrigerator. And, oh, were they sweet. My father, when I was a kid, the season was around the Jewish holidays for about two, three weeks, and that was it. And we would buy them, and they were $8 a melon because they probably just came out. That's the equivalent to over $80 a melon today. Kamala Harris probably mentioned in the debate that uh, the Build Back Better is working, but she's going to fix things from day one. Well, if everything is working so good, what is there to fix on day one? Because she knows, as dumb as she is, and she is probably borderline retarded. It, but if on an IQ test, she'd be called dull normal, which is an IQ of 90 in the area of 90. What is there to fix if everything is built back better, is working so well? The one thing Trump did do, uh, he mentioned, I don't know, did I mention this? I don't even remember if I mentioned this just now in our discussion here today uh, on this video, but uh, Trump uh, did mention, he said, if you want to fix the border, did I mention this? If you want to fix the border, you can sign it, you can seal the border right now. With an no, you didn't order. mention that, but I okay. knew he said that. He did say that, and that was that was good that he mentioned that. But he should have that he should have really pounded her on that. That you know, you can you know, we can solve the problem right now. Why don't you sign it? Why don't you sign right now? I think I did mention that I, on on day one, I'm going to close the border. I'm going to sign something closing the border. I think I did mention that that that's what Trump should have said. Uh, but anyway. I hope he does. By the way, if he gets elected, I hope he does it. I hope I hope he does. Uh, you know, even if he doesn't do everything he's promising he's going to do, he's still better than Kamala Harris. We still got to fight to to get him elected. But uh, what can I say? I'm one of those people out there that you Republicans hate because I, like Ann Coulter, do not forgive the fact that the wall wasn't completed. What can I say? I'm one of these people. I want a real. I don't want. Build that wall, build that. I'm not interested in your chance. I want a real wall. <laughs> I'm one of the people who wants a real wall. You know, and Ted Cruz and Ron DeSantis would have given us a real wall. But anyway, whatever. Uh he he has promised he's gonna close the border with it by executive order. That would make a big difference. That would help. That would definitely help. And uh he should have really hammered that home. He should have said, You can do that right now. He did say that. In the end, I think he said it, but it, you know, it got lost in the maze of everything else, unfortunately. But uh, he should that he sh he should have just hammered home ha hammered home the same theme over and over again, the same themes. And what can I say? Yeah, I was I, talking to a man in my gym today, Italian, and he's saying he said the same things, the same things that Trump should have stuck to and hammered over and over again. He's saying the same things you're saying. I, I didn't print this out because you can't read it anyway, but it's a list of countries that require an ID to vote. And uh, uh, on a paper about two-thirds this size, in small print that old people like me can't see without a magnifying glass, it's three columns of countries that we require an ID to vote. In this country, if you want to withdraw money, you need an ID or a debit card from your bank, if you want to draw money from your bank. If you want to buy alcohol, you need an ID. But if you go and vote, you don't need an ID. My whole life, up until more recently, was they gave you a voter card. You had to show an ID to get a voter card. And you brought that voter card with you and you signed the book. So you couldn't vote a second time. And that was all canceled, at least in New York City in the late 90s, because my mother's closest friend, a nice Irish woman from across the street, and they were the best of friends, was one of the poll, poll workers. And in the late 90s, she was told to let anybody vote who wants to vote. And, and you they know do. that. Be, you kicked two Hispanics out in your polling place. You knew they didn't belong there. And Finally, he said, come, we go see the policia. And they walked out. They didn't want to let me in. They didn't want to let me vote. 
the poll watchers there didn't want to let they said you are in the wrong pre you and 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 my my late mother my beautiful late mother they didn't want to let us vote they said you're in the wrong polling place i went there with my mother to vote and i said what do you mean we're not i, I showed them that we're in the right you know and we do have to show id we had to show them what our polling place is and every we had to show them and they still didn't want to let us vote until i made you know i made a big scene i said i'm going to complain about this i said because i saw they were turning all the orthodox jews away because they know orthodox jews vote republican so they were turning all the orthodox jews away by the way there's a video on on youtube of someone questioning orthodox jews how they're going to vote just orthodox jews in borough park every single one says they're going to vote for trump every single one trump is going to get literally 90 95 percent of the orthodox jewish vote 90 or 95 percent so but orthodox jews are only one tenth of american jews they're only 10 percent of american jews but the orthodox jews who are the religious jews the ones that wear kippot and that uh and that you know that believe in 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 god and 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 believe in in, in judaism those jews are, are voting are all voting for trump but but they were turning all the orthodox jews away this was the election with obama Obama versus Romney. This was Obama versus Romney in 2012. And Orthodox Jews would wait. They would say, you, you don't vote here. Go there. Check this. Do that. They would do that because they knew that some people who were busy with work and other things would then wind up saying, oh, okay, forget it. I just can't, you know, and give up on voting. They turned, they were turning people away. And I saw that everyone else who they know is going to vote Democrat, <laughs> that all the people going to vote Democrat, they knew not to turn them away. And you know, I mean, it was just, it was so outrageous. It was so outrageous. And I, I saw people there that I knew were not, uh, that I, I suspected were not citizens. And when I said, I'm going to call the pol policia, they ran. They, they, they left. They quickly left. Oh, what a, what a crazy world we live in. Well, in quotes, starving illegal aliens are now raiding supermarkets for food as if they don't get enough money from the government between New York City and New York State. They're probably living the life of luxury, but they can't keep away from their criminal habits. This is what happens when you bring the third world into your country. They can't compete. There's always exceptions, a few, but, you know, they... The people sneaking across the border are not doctors, lawyers, or Indian chiefs. They're the lowest of the low, and they have no regard for your immigration laws. So why, and you did absolutely nothing. You even rewarded them for breaking our laws. And so why should they obey any other law? Did you know that 50% of people who board buses in New York City don't pay the fare anymore? 50 percent i don't know if you're aware of that because when you were here people still had to pay f bus fare yeah 50 percent don't pay the fare anymore i'm gonna leave it up to our audience our our very uh honorable audience and our very wise audience to to guess where that 50 percent comes from but anyway 50 percent of people boarding buses simply walk past now i i saw you know i see this all the time every time i take a bus they walk past, they don't pay the fare. They just don't pay. And the driver won't say anything for fear of being shot. Uh, drivers were, were assaulted and, and, and attacked when they said something, and now they've been ordered to let them walk by, not pay the fare. And then they wonder why the MTA, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority in, in New York, is losing money. Uh, Kamala Harris, though, she wants to give them more money to, to behave like this. Now, this is this is... But this is, this is where we're going. This is what people are voting for. This is where you're going. You think America can survive if America behaves like this? You know, Kamala Harris is your candidate if you think so. Well, brave men in the normal order of things fight for liberty with blood, sweat, and tears. Their children, having it easy, let it slip away. And then their grandchildren end up as slaves. And today, if you're a slave, it's not because you're in chains. It's because you're in debt. And we, the people, are supposed to be masters of Congress and the courts, not to overthrow the Constitution, 
but to overthrow the men who would pervert the Constitution. That is a quote from Abraham Lincoln. And uh, Thomas Sowell, in one of his statements, he said, in this time of equity and equality, what is your fair share of what I earn? Meaning if you're uh, a lazy and you're on the government dole and you keep saying the rich should pay more in tax, well, what is your fair share for sitting around doing nothing while everybody else, not everybody else, while half the country is working? A country can't survive where half produce and half take. By the way, I was unhappy also in the debate that Kamala Harris, speaking of that, that Kamala Harris said that she's going to reduce taxes. Trump should have should have gone after her on that, that she's going to reduce taxes for the middle class and working people. Oh, really? I would say, remember what you were paying, the taxes you were paying when I was president? And look at the taxes you're paying now. If you think taxes are lower under them, then vote for them. But if you think taxes are lower when I'm president, because you know I lowered your taxes, then vote for me. They want they, they want my taxes to expire, my tax cuts to expire. And when that happens, you're going to be paying thousands more. That's what Trump should have said, because that is that is the reality. Oh, it's just, uh, tell you, they get away with so many lies, so many lies. And the thing is, the people believe it, because if Joseph Goebbels of Nazi Germany said, you tell a big lie often enough, it becomes the truth. Remember, Bill Clinton promised to cut taxes in his campaign against George Bush Sr. And George Bush said, well, I can cut taxes too. The thing is, like, just like Kamala, he was the president at the time. Why didn't he cut taxes to bump, give the economy a bump? And of course, Clinton the liar, as soon as he got in, he didn't, not only didn't cut taxes, he raised taxes. And the American people are so stupid, they fall for it over and over. How many people don't know who they're going to vote for until they actually get in the voting booth? And then it's a matter of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And I have one last thing talking about stupid. Just what is chimp intelligence compared to human intelligence? I've seen a chimp, and I want to point out that chimps are the most violent by far primates. Right now in Africa, there's a troop of chimps attacking gorillas and attacking people. They will attack any chimp troop near them, and they uh, kill the males and take the females. Gorillas aren't like that. Orangutans aren't like that. And the, uh, But th there was this chimp. There is this chimp. I saw the uh, YouTubes. They give him a computer screen, and they teach him that... Two is a number that's higher than one. Three is a number that's higher than either one of them. Four is higher in the, the progression. They put numbers one to 10 on a screen, scrambled all over the screen. And then they remove the number and put a white box there. And the chimp has to point out, this is one, two, three, without seeing the numbers because there's just a white square there. And nine out of 10 times, the chimp will get all 10 right. People can't get three numbers, right? A lot of them can't get, can't get past number two. So who's, who's smarter in this area? And if a chimp can do that, just imagine what a bonobo can do, which is higher on the evolutionary scale. A bonobo has longer legs, can stand up more. Its spine is not as bent over as a chimp. The piece of his mouth that comes out doesn't come out as far. Its brow up here isn't as thick, and they're not violent. In fact, bonobos have sex every 15 minutes, and that, I guess, takes away their violent nature because they're too tired to attack another troop. But And uh, when they're young, the males have a part down their hair like alfalfa from the little rascals, and uh, they're very friendly. And if you want to see one in action, there's this one on YouTube called Kanzi. He's a full-grown male bonobo. And he understands over 300 words. And the words are on a computer, like they gave him kale to eat. And he hits the buttons, because he can't speak. He hits the buttons that said, this is tough lettuce. And uh, he, he had a baby. 
and they're raising the baby by human. They want to see if they could teach the baby to talk. And uh, <laughs> probably do a lot better job than some people in this country. But we'll see. I don't think they can because the vocal cords are inverted from people. But you never know. Animals can be surprising. I saw a chimp once. They hung a bunch of bananas from the ceiling, which was 20 feet high. And they put uh, wooden crates all over his cage. Now, it wasn't one the cage. It was a room. And he put those crates one on top of another and climbed to the top to get those bananas. So they can think. And that's a violent chimp. That's not a bonobo who's even smarter. So if you ever get a chance, Kanzi, K-A-N-Z-I, just watch him use a computer. And that's it. I'm through. By the way, the uh, you know, animals, of course, God created amazing animals, uh, but they can't change their nature that they live by instinct. Uh, human beings, someday we'll do an another, maybe we'll do another show on all of this after the election, but the human beings, of course, learn. A human, a baby uh, knows nothing when a baby, a human baby is born and has to learn everything. And look how much, look how much they learn. Look, look what they develop into. Uh, whereas animals learn, know through instinct automatically. And they're going to live by instinct automatically. And that their instinct, their instinctual behavior cannot be changed. They, they, they live, they live uh, by, by that instinct. And, and that's why animals don't progress the same way you you go to a, a if you go to chimps thousand years ago and you go to chimp ch how chimps live today in the jungle nothing has changed whereas uh, human beings of course progress from generation to generation that's why a chimp mother loves her children but a chimp grandmother doesn't even know her grandchildren doesn't care about them there's no continuity afterwards so anyway there's interesting little things about nature that uh, god in the world that God, uh, in the world that God gave us, one thing's for sure: even violent chimps are not going to be raiding Woolworths or not Woolworths. What's it called? Um, uh, the stores now. Walmart. Walmart and all of these other. It used to be Woolworths. Remember Woolworths? Sure, we used to okay. eat lunch at the counter at Woolworths. Yeah. Um, so uh, Walmart and and all these other stores raiding them and and you know because kamala harris when she was when she was in california one of the wonderful things she did as a prosecutor her and the other left-wing democrats said police are not allowed to arrest shoplifters now so they come in with giant carts and load up the cart with a thousand dollars worth of merchandise and walk out nobody touches them by the way they claim that there's a limit of i don't know 900 or something dollars that they're allowed yeah it's close to a thousand yeah they it's don't about follow. About 980, something like that. They don't follow the limit. They don't they do not pay any attention to that. Even if these people come into the store and rob thousands of dollars, they let them walk out. They are instructed not to do anything, not to interfere when they come. And because of that, of course, all the stores are leaving California and then people are complaining. We don't have any stores to shop in. We don't have any Oh, you keep voting for Democrats, you don't deserve to have stores to shop in if you vote for Democrats. You vote for people like Kamala Harris. You deserve nothing. You deserve nothing. Well, the anyway, American people are so stupid. They deserve Kamala Harris as their president. Unfortunately, unfortunately, but but the Jews in Israel don't deserve that, and the and certainly the Jews in Judea and Samaria don't deserve that. They're going to suffer, God forbid, for that. So we we want to we want to prevent all of that. And there are righteous Gentiles in America too that uh, we don't want them getting hurt either. Well, we will, So for their sake, uh, we fight to defeat Kamala Harris and to elect Donald Trump, and we also fight for the Hilltop Youth. In your heart, you know we're right, and in your guts, you know they're nuts. For JTF, until next week, this is Chaim Ben Pesach, and for David Ben Moshe, Shalom.